Hello, football fans. Ryan here. Welcome to Officials Timeout. I am Ryan, and joining me is... Also Ryan. You know, I need to stop pointing because I don't know where you are, <laughs> and, and I got to stop that. Okay, I'm going to shut up. Let's go to the play. Just don't see that very often. Hart looking to throw. He does across the middle, wide open. That you see a lot. That's Nikki Teeter. Ball's out. Ball's out. Ball's out. Flag flies. And Danelli's going to have it. But I think Coco's going to get it back on a hit to the head. That should right. be Coco football. 15 so, more yards and a first down. So, Ryan, we had that wing uh, come in real quickly. Uh, is there a little more to the story that maybe we're not hearing with the audio uh, uh, in the video? Well, we're going to see. Uh, a inadvertent whistle signal, uh, ah. which you and I and the six officials in this game are the only people who know that. Uh, well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, officials are the only one that, that know that signal. Uh, so there was an inadvertent whistle. Um, I've, I've tried to tried to pull it out. I cannot hear it on the, uh, game, the game film on the, on this video. Uh, but there was an inadvertent whistle so we can try try to figure out where this inadvertent whistle may have gone. Uh, so we had what looked like a catch over the middle, nice little gain, and it looked to me like a illegal helmet contact. There you go. There's the uh, signal, inadvertent There we whistle. go. Yep. Um, and now we have a personal foul. Yeah, illegal helmet contact or targeting on the defense. So uh, the way I read the rule book, inadvertent whistle, when we have a foul, we just ignore the inadvertent whistle, and the foul takes priority. Um, they march the foul off from the previous spot, which would indicate to me that the inadvertent whistle came during the pass, but that doesn't seem to be the case, at least not from what I saw. They they march the penalty, so we have 15 yards uh, for the tar targeting. Am I correct in that? Yes, Okay, so we have 15 uh, on targeting. Uh, we are uh, NFHS since this is Florida, uh, Cocoa Beach, right where near where my grandpa lives down in Florida. Uh, uh, I want and, and I want to say Dandelion versus Cocoa, but it's obviously <laughs> not Dandelion. I, that's that's what I want to say. Right on the Space Coast, you can see their uh, area code is three two one as a nod to the space industry in that okay. area. Cool. Uh, so, um, so we have a, a 15 yard, uh, targeting penalty, but it's not an automatic first down. Um, uh, thus, uh, it appears they're potentially marching 15 off. Well, I don't think they're marching it. Uh, so Ryan, it's not, not abundantly clear what's going on. Do you have any, uh, inside I, info here? Well, it's it's it is a mystery. the The video doesn't help, or the the sound on the video doesn't help. The announcers don't help. Um, but if we we look at it, if if we have an inadvertent whistle, right? Um, like I said, we we forget we forget the well. We have an inadvertent whistle and a foul. We just forget the inadvertent whistle and we go with the foul. But I I would assume, based on what we see in this play, that the inadvertent whistle came after the catch. And I am going to assume that there was a catch too. Um, so we have a catch. And then I think the ball carrier, the receiver, fumbled the ball. And that's where I think the inadvertent whistle came because that's when it usually comes when we have a loose ball like that. So I think that's where the inadvertent whistle came. And if that is where it came, then it's not the previous spot. It's the dead ball spot, which would be where they blew the whistle. Yeah, right. yeah, and so so they should be marching off fifteen yards from uh, approximately uh, the forty-seven or forty-eight, based yeah. on my view. Yeah, it, yeah. If that isn't if that is in fact where the uh, inadvertent whistle occurred, um, because I think the the receiver caught the ball, was hit, fumbled, and somewhere in that sort of action, we had that that whistle. Because I don't know why you would blow a whistle otherwise i mean you you wouldn't right. even be anticipating a whistle unless you're somehow running with a whistle in your mouth and it you accidentally tweet it uh, I, I i have seen officials uh sometimes uh when we do see iw's come up uh if they do have uh, a flag they sort of the brain stops and instead of uh throw and go they think throw and blow 
Um, you know, I've seen that uh, like with a face mask penalty before uh, with another official, you know, vicious face mask and they blew the whistle. Right. And yeah. but hey, even a bad face mask, we're still, you know, playing on uh, and just throwing that flag. So p- perhaps we had something like that go on. Yeah. A- an official saw saw the hit and threw the flag and blew the whistle. Yeah. Um, but I, I still if that is the case. We're enforcing this penalty then from not the previous spot, but from the end of the run. Yeah. So. And and also correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but I don't see any marching off period. It looks like it's just being placed in a, a, a determined space. Am, am I correct in that? Yeah. And, and that is something I'm noticing a lot video from outside of where we officiate and, and Ryan and I officiate in Southwest Washington. I've noticed in other, uh, in some other parts of the, of the country, uh, penalty of fi- penalty enforcement is different. Uh, but I have also heard, I mean, not to say that we're so, Oh, great. Oh, Washington. They know how to the evergreen <laughs> state. They know how to enforce penalties. Um, I've had guys who, um, I've heard from guys who, who evaluate officials in Washington state say that is the number one culprit, uh, penalty enforcement. So it's, it's probably the number one thing we all need to work on as a unit is penalty enforcement. And so, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I'm, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of examples of just kind of Bruce setting the ball down and going and not marching it off. So yeah, you yeah. are right about I, that. I, I, I think the marching it off is sort of a good mental sort of check and balance when it comes to making sure we are officiating penalties, right? Um, not only just the, the right amount of yards, but where it's being administered from. Um, I find that a really good sort of check back and forth. So I don't know if other people in the comments have a different view on this, but as a wing uh, varsity official in Washington, I'm marching off everything uh, when I'm uh, uh, a headline. So i uh, be interested to hear if uh, people are a little more casual than that, uh, depending on where they're at in the country. Before we go, did you think video from what you saw in the video, did you like the call of illegal helmet contact or targeting? Did you like it that? Did- it did look like he, and yeah, I guess we skipped right over that. Uh, it looks like, um, it looks like he did drop his head. Um, you know, and, uh, I do think that while, uh, he was not defenseless at the time, um, dropping the head on a recent, on a receiver that has recently caught the ball. Um, I, I do think usually brings to the level of targeting. What are your sort of thoughts? Uh, yeah, I keep saying targeting. I, I'm want let's look at it again to make sure that, uh, yeah, I guess you could go targeting. Definitely, the defender, the defender hit the um, uh, looked like the defender hit the offensive player with his helmet. So that would be illegal helmet yes. contact. Um, I, I I say targeting because it's targeting and legal helmet contact have the same signal. Uh, anyway, I I do think uh, from what I can see on the video, the, the foul looks pretty righteous. Um, I'm less concerned about the foul and more about the inadvertent whistle. That's got me really puzzled. What do you think? Please let us know in the comment section below. We want to hear from you. Tell us your insights, your experiences, uh, your thoughts on on this play. A lot going on. Inadvertent whistle, illegal helmet contact, uh, penalty enforcement, and, of course, uh, Dandelion versus Coco. I mean, you can't get any better than than that matchup. I know they're not called Dandelion. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for watching. We're going to leave you with the fifth down. And let's hear for the RFH senior football players and their parents.